Mm, what's goody? I'm Husky, fucking from Australia, from Wollongong. Living at Western Sydney now, though, so fucking repping it all. Mm. Let's get it. Yeah, man can see whatever they want, you don't count until. Charlie says. Your boy ain't ever been number one in the country until. Charlie says. That's right, they respect my opinion, yeah, they wait until. Charlie says. Body the booth. Madness. Body the booth. What, what, what a time. The body bag media era, as yeah. I call it. It was mad times, because everything was going down then. I was living in the studio. I was fucking at Bagsy's house. It was at his parents' house. I was living in their garage and shit. And so, did you, like, plan to do a body to booth, or was it like a spur of the moment thing? He was trying to start the body bag media thing. He was trying to get as many rappers as he could on it. So I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll do it. Mm. And like, the beat off that, or Sweden or Switzerland or something, I fucking, sorry, bro, I don't remember where you're from. One of them hectic countries. Because that was, um, produced by Luke Goons and then you used him you've used him a ton haven't you over the, over the years yeah he supports me he's very thousand bucks stealing him and then he fucking got on to me after I made like five songs and they started blowing up a bit and he's like what the fuck bro you owe me money and I was like what <laughs> and he's like I'll, I'll hook you up because like he's like I've had a few customers from Australia and I've never had customers from Australia before so like I'll, I'll let it slide you know what I mean chuck me a couple hundred bucks I'd do a mad deal and then whatever and then from then he's just got, he's got heaps of beats over here now on his track so like, if he's still selling for a thousand bucks he's not right just become like a fucking notorious thing to hear that loop goons tag at the start of a beat of like mm. oh, on a husky track it become like part of your identity almost as well because yeah, literally right. some of your biggest hits were using some of his beats he, like he changed it yeah bro Fuck, what? I'm like wearing the same hat all, man. <laughs> Still got the same I'm one nearly, all these nearly, years later. I'm nearly. <laughs> Racking clothes from David Jones. Nah, nah, nah. Listen, why is that line so iconic? Ah, oh, bro. Do you have David Jones over there? I don't no? think so. I don't think so. Good shit, bro. And I just used to steal shit from there, bro. And like, everyone calls it racking. I think he's doing over there, too. Racking yeah, stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, dacking, dacking it, racking it, whatever. You know what I mean? No, no. Fucking... Everyone relates, bro. Yeah. And then copper station, take it home. I used to, I used to stash the bag full of whatever I could, take it to my dealer's house when I was a kid, and just get weed, give him all these fresh polo gear. Like my dealer was the freshest cut out. I was didn't even wear shit. <laughs> <laughs> Man was racking clothes from David Jones, and it weren't even for himself. Yeah. She keeps seeing me with strippers off of them prescription pills I take alone. She keeps saying that she hate me later in the day. She drunk and raped my phone. Uh, is that is that about someone in particular or was that an if the shoe fits kind of bar? Yeah. Nah, someone in particular. Bro, the shoe fits all of them, but like it's definitely about fucking. I'm not gonna give it names, but uh, it's, it was about one person. But like the shoe fell friend were the same size, bro. It's how they've been rocking the same glass slipper for a little time, bro. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. Fuck that. I just she noticed that like them. Australian can't say. Do you know what I mean? So much, bro. I'm just dropping it every second line here. You hear me? Or, you know what I mean? You, 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 nah, you Ugly, feel bro. me? You feel me? You hear me? Hear what I'm saying? Nah, we do exactly the same thing, man. That's that's a yeah, man, that's a common one still. Now you're trying to forget me, discover my face. I've been sipping the game, trying to master pain. Overdosing on pills, you could ask my mates. I've been writing this shit while I'm half awake. Basket case, I thought I was past this stage. Am I right in saying this come from a point where you weren't in the greatest headspace like you're just ready to go at the world yeah cuz yeah bro i've always been like that like my whole life i was fucking angry bro but like i like i said i was sleeping in the studio i was angry because i was going through some breakup shit and like it was a fucked up breakup too man you know what i mean like i fucking i don't know cuz i was giving up at the time and i was taking drugs and i was, I was fucking different bitches every night in this fucking studio and then like I, I didn't want to be alone, so like I'd keep him around for a fucking couple of days, and the bitches would fall in love. And then I'm like, you gotta go, man. Like that wasn't the plan. Like I was just kind of using you, you know, because I didn't want to be alone in this fucking studio by myself. It's inside with his happy family in the air conditioner, and I'm in like 40 degree heat in the fucking bush of fucking Australia. Like, fuck this, guys. I gotta go back to the city, get my life on order. I started fucking all these stupid bitches again, and ugly times, man. And yeah, I was gonna ask this near the end, but I'll ask it now. Did this body the booth kind of when this come out and it and it like blown up should you say and whatnot did that help you to like 
kick anything into gear? Did that make you change anything in your life at that point? Like once this come out and you realized the numbers it was doing and the attention it was getting, did that make you change anything? No, bro. Like I fucking have, I've always hated this shit. Like I can't handle it. This is the thing because like I express myself in different ways all the time. And like talking to people is a good one, but I'm not good at that. Mm. But when eventually I find someone I talk to, that's a good way of expressing myself. I fucking write music. I I fucking cut my wrists and shit sometimes because it's just music and the rest isn't. I know that it's fucked up, but like that's just how I grew up, cause and I'm not good in the spotlight, bro. This kind of blew me up to a point where I was like, "Fuck, did I even think about this?" Like, I was kind of crying for attention at the time, cause like suicidal and shit like that. You know what I mean? Didn't have no family. I don't have anything like that. I kind of put it out and. Then, I've got some attention and I was like, fuck, bro, I don't really want this now. And then I kind of just went back in my shell and stayed in my house and it fucked me up a little bit. So, if anything, it had the opposite effect on you. If anything, like, it it wasn't, you know what I mean? Yeah, there were some positives in what was happening, but at the same time, as you said, you didn't love this shit. You didn't love that spotlight and whatnot. So it come mm. with its equal share of problems as well. Yeah, bro. And, like, and I'll, I'll act up for the people when, like, I don't want to be, be that person. I'm out here fucking getting rowdy and doing this and that when I read it I'm fucking I'm not that kind of person that people do see me like all my lives being a goose because like I fucking beat myself up because I'm like fuck I should be going alive like these other rappers but I can't and then that fucking kill, it, it eats me up bro and then like I'll get cooked and I'll be like fucking going on live yes and I'll just, just be a fuck with and like you know what I mean it's not me because I'm the message that I wanted to and it took me a long time to get it like a, a like get a hold of that shit because before I wasn't really expressing myself creative I was more expressing myself because I just to say some shit you know what I mean so fuck it and it is definitely an expression but like it's not that creative who don't really understand that until they hear my, hear my new music you'll be like oh true he actually is a musician like he's not just a poet or a fucking Storyteller or just some shock value rapper that says some fucking cringy shit. I get sick of fucking bitches trying to save me now because I know that they hearts gonna break. Doing the same shit for years. Play by a bitch who just played with my fears. Faded alone, I've been faded for years. I can't say it to her, but I'll say it on this. And so that goes into what you were saying before. Like, I can't say it to someone physically, but I can write this shit down. Like, yeah, bro, hard. And like, like I said, I'm fucking going back into my old ways again because I just had a happy family kind of thing and I fucking lost it all. And I was just, I'm, you can tell I'm battling at it. I'm beating myself up because I'm doing the wrong things. And like, for some reason, I can't get a hold of myself. I can't control that shit. I was just going on downhill and watching it happen. Mm -hmm. And everyone else is watching it happen too. Mm -hmm. But we're here now. And don't get me wrong, you'd never, you know, wish for any of those things to happen. But if you was to take one, the one blessing out of that was it created some of your most raw like unfiltered music you know what i mean like and that's why people related to Definitely. it so much that's why people loved it so much because as you said you were living through it you were every single lyric every single emotion that was put into that was real you know what i mean it weren't it weren't manufactured it wasn't made yeah. up or anything like that and so where it was so real it was like too real you know what i mean like for some people to handle but that's why some people absolutely loved it equally like yeah a lot of people, they don't even want to be my fan. Come to do late and they fucking commit. You know what I mean? Like, this come gets it. And not many d people do get this mind state. You know what I mean? I'm when I was living in this fucking shed trying to kill myself. Uh, all my, you know what I mean? So, like, that's what I'm saying. They fucking, they say that I'm fishing, blade in my back. What is it? Fucking, whatever them buzzwords, blade in my back, and they say that I'm fishing. You know what I mean? Like, these yeah. motherfuckers stab me in the back, and then they're saying, like, I'm fishing for attention. Like, fuck you, cunt. Because I was doing this and making money that these motherfuckers want to be my friends. But then when I'm trying to, like, talk to these cunts, I understand. We're all, ki we're all young men. We don't know how to handle like all these emotions and me putting it on these motherfuckers constantly was probably draining as fuck because like, i'm older now and i'm seeing my mates have like these little crosses and like i don't want to help them at all i'm like motherfucker you just weren't helping me mm -hmm. but I'll, i just can't do that i was a bit angry at that too i was dirty on the world mm. I, I i understand like that feeling of like just you versus the world in it Right. Yeah, I just felt like I was draining everyone's energy, bro. No, no one wanted to be my friend anymore because I was just a burden on these motherfuckers. Like, living in this garage, like, getting that fucking drug fucked. I was literally trying to kill myself. Like, it was fucked up, man. And no one wanted to help me except for Bagsy, like, Body Bag Media. And, like, his family and shit. He's got a full straight family, hectic, nice family, mum and dad, soldiers. And, like, they helped me out and shit. And I was like, fuck, I don't want 
to burden these people because they're the nicest motherfuckers ever. Oh, I hear it, man. Shout out bags each and every time, man. I remember me and dad saying pod silver water some dumb, dumb shit. shit. Talking about 20 years back, how it still hurts what my mum did. did. And it's mad because in this freestyle, mm. that beat drops down there and you know what I mean? It takes a step back. Turns out, I mean, yeah. it's a laid back beat yeah. anyway, but it takes a step back in production. And then that's when some of your like darkest, most hard hitting bars come at that point. You know what I mean? Like, it's, I don't know. Do you, yeah. when you write, do you ever do, do you ever do the whole thing of like, I really want this part in particular to come across or anything like that? Or are you just one of them? You just write as you feel it kind of thing. Or do you know what you kind of, right. you know what things you want to say and when? Weird that you say that. I do now, but back then, this was all one loop. It's a four bar recorded over it. And then he fucking chopped it up and made it sound like this. But I can send you the original version. It's not even nothing like this. He fucking made this beat crazy. Okay. So like all that, that's all loop goons, bro. But like this part of the song, I think he just knew it because this is all like just raw storytelling. Like it's not like nothing lyric. It's a little bit lyrical, I suppose, mm -hmm. compared to some shit. But like at at this part, like of the song is fucked up. That's the part of the song that sticks with me the most. Because like I, I when I first went to jail, I'm talking about uh, like I do, I do miss the days when I was like on the rocks smoking with my brother and my dad. That's the closest we've ever been. My dad's either been in and out of jail or over, and I'm trying to help him, and we just don't have a connection because he's trying to avoid me or doing that to him. And my dad's always been fucked. So when we were all together cooked, it's fucking, it's it's hard to say. That's the most family like we've ever been, bro. Selling drugs and shit when we were all old enough, you know what I mean? My dad wasn't good at raising young kids, but when we were young men, we all like related to him a little bit. Mm. And like, he's a bit of a, like, he's a soldier, he's a staunch cunt. He's, well respected he does his thing we were all doing our own thing like that was that's crazy that that's the best time we've ever had and like i remember i went to jail and like i was shitting myself as you do your young kid 18 and i didn't know what the fuck i was gonna do i haven't seen my dad or my brother a couple months and like as soon as i walked out the door boom my dad just walked past me and i thought what the fuck bro like the odds of running into my old man in jail is crazy like the first time when i needed someone I talked to him and like he was tell it kind of hurt him to see me there and he's like trying to pep talk me and i was like bro shut the fuck up my girlfriend's pregnant. I don't want to hear you talk. And then he's like, but you think you're a mad cunt? Like, well, I was 18 when your mum was pregnant. And I was in here and she come and visit me once. And uh, she gave me drugs on the visit. And then when she left, she was with some bikey cunt. And my dad was coming for the afternoon visit. Back then, you could get two visits in a day. And uh, her, his, his, my dad's dad seen my mum getting on the bike with this cunt, kissing him, whatever. While she was pregnant, and that just sent my dad crazy, and he tried to kill himself. He cut his wrist with a fucking baked bean tin in like the same pod that we were in, like in Darcy too, in Stillwater, in Sydney jail. And uh, he just pointed at his own and said, "Like, bro, that's fucking same same situation, bro. You want to be careful. Like, if you're gonna kill yourself, you want to do it properly." It's like you're not gonna get no sympathy from cunts around here just for cutting your ears. I guess at that point as well, that's a lot to process as well. You know what I mean, like. You know, you got your yeah. own shit to deal with, and then you got the words from from your dad and all, all these other people and whatnot. And it's like, you know, a, it must be a lot going through your mind at one time, kind of thing. Hard, bro. And as a kid, bro, and like just having that anxiety of just being in a shitty, uncomfortable situation, like jail, the stories you've heard. You, back then, I'm still thinking, dude, they're getting raped in there and shit. <laughs> I'm yeah, a little yeah, skinny yeah. fucking kid. Uh, you know what I mean? I didn't realize it's a bunch of cunts that are just like minded. All my friends are dead like Uzi Vert. I burnt them bridges down like Lucifer. Maybe I'm cut because I love her still, but I'm too stubborn, so don't give a fuck that I'm losing her. Keep going back, that's confusing her, but I just want us to go back in time. So you're having like that back and forth with her. One minute it's like you don't want her, then you're yeah. going back to her, and then that's confusing her and this whole back and forth. Like, was it the whole like one yeah. minute you're together, next minute you broke up, or was it always together and just toxic with each other effectively? Always together, bro always together and i'm just a toxic person fucking i don't know what happened because like she's not on drugs bro and i wasn't on drugs either because like i was when i met her taking prescription pills like xanax blah blah, blah. and then uh she got pregnant and like i went to jail again like that was back then so like i'm just fuck i feel bad because i just like red lighted who this chick is but it's all right <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah nah. we, like, we, like i was i was young bro and then i went when i come out it was my first time in jail first time on probation I was, I was getting piss tested. I wasn't on drugs. I was fucking, I didn't even want to be on drugs. I felt so good having a baby, happy family, you know what I mean? Mm. And then 
like she got this postnatal depression thing hectically and like it just kind of fucking fried her brain a bit bro like she like lost her mind like like full-on seeing things like waking me up in the middle of the night saying there's like demons in the house and shit and like uh bro I, I i just felt like i was the worst person for her so she like left to go stay at a like grandparents house and then i was just like the only way she's gonna get better is if i just leave her and then like that's what i did i just like wiped my hands with everything and just walked away from it because i just felt like it was all my fault kind of thing and the dumbest shit i could have done but like at the time i was like fucking it's the only way like it's got to be my fault that this has happened and then it's kind of fucking me up, bro. Like, it was real tough. I didn't know if I made the wrong decision. Like, it's fucked up. She's all right now, though. Mm. No, that's good. I'm glad Maybe. to hear that. Like, and, and as you said, like you don't know... Maybe it was the right decision. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. But at the time, you don't know that. It's easy to say in hindsight, like, oh, yo, I should have done this and I should... You know what I mean? If, if every cunt could do that, then most people yeah. wouldn't even end up in prison. Most people wouldn't end... You know what I mean? It's easy. The, the power of hindsight would be um, amazing in that regard. Do I have to remind these hoes they never wanted me till that's seen stacks off a packet of arse? I ain't falling in love with no strip of fuck tea paint. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't falling in love with no stripper. Fuck T Pain. I thought that was interesting like, when uh, T Pain started uh, reviewing uh, Australian artists. Bro, he needs to hit me up because, like, <laughs> I, I just want it to be known that, like, it's never fuck T Pain. It's always like T Pain is the man. Yeah. But I'm just trying to get the point across that yeah. I ain't falling in love with no <laughs> Hey, look, I lied because, all right, you know what I mean? Yeah. I fell in love with so many. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ain't shit changed. <laughs> no, I'm a bad, bad liar. No, that, I'm in love with a stripper song, bro. That's a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, Strong. Every, every, everything, that's a banger pain. Shout out, if anything. No, that's a shout out. He's out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better make him waves. Yeah, we say fuck T Pain, but we love him really. We love him really. Cats on the top try and link me now because you see I've been creeping beneath your window. <laughs> I don't even think so. Fuck the fame, I don't want the shit. Cats on the scene all know my name because I come, come to, to the, the booth, booth and, and I body, 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 body. Uh. 201. Yes, sir. And that was your bit at the end to just say, yeah, fuck you, man. I can bar out just as much as you, man, can, like. On your rapper ego shit, you know what I'm saying? At that point, did you feel like you were like when you're saying you you felt like the top dog? Did you actually feel that way? Like, did you genuinely feel like one of the best rappers in the country at that point? Dope, like there's cunts that have always been dope, like Alex Jones and this and that, but it was just weird, bro. It was just fucking weird, and I was like, Aussie rap is fucked up. You know, like, I never fucked with it. I got into it after. After I started getting dragged into the scene, and then I was like, ah, oh, who are these cunts trying to talk to me? And then I was like, oh, they they're actually pretty. But like from the outside, I just knew like Cursor fucking 360, like shit like that. And I was like, I'm not, it's not for me, bro. Shout out Cursor, but it's just not for me. Mm. No, that's fair. Do you know, you're not, and I know you're not the only one as well. I know there's plenty of other rappers as well that didn't know what the fuck was going on until they started making music themselves. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And like, even me, like I didn't do much. For, like, I don't know. I didn't do much for the scene. Like, well, I've always been, I'm not really commercializing myself. Like, I don't, I'm. If you really want to know what the fuck's going on in Australia in the streets, like you listen to my music and you fucking half get it, like, because that's that. I just am what I am. Like I can't be anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I can't really because like what I do isn't about that. Like that was the that was that whole brain numb era. That brain numb EP, fucking. That's all written in that same time kind of thing. That brain numb EP was written when I was like going through the breakup but living with that jigs too and then it was all kicking off and then it was finished i finished writing that a little bit after this so like when i was in the studio maybe when i got a house for myself i finally pulled my shit together and then got that ep done so like, that's all it's all that and i mean you had tracks like two fake sad boy old me and they become still to this day some people's favorites you know what i mean like mm. cult classics mm. is do you look back at like that brain numb ep for an example do you look back at that project and think this is a really good body of work or do you look back at it and not really love it the same way other people do? No, that's the one that I am proud of. I, like I said, I had time to be creative. I wasn't, like on all my other songs, you could tell it's more like just raw shit. Like it's just raw. I was either doing it in my bedroom, I was doing it in some trap house. I was like, I was doing it with a bunch of cunts that were just, we were all doing something, you know what I mean? And until now, when I've had time to be creative again, that's the only project I'm happy with. That record project that I just dropped, that was all drafts. That's all like concepts of what songs were meant to be. And then I went to jail and I was like, fuck, bro. Fuck. I just released whatever we've got. 
I didn't even get in the studio. I didn't even record any of them songs over the beat that you hear them over. Sessions of Little Snow. That was more just a put together type SoundCloud. Who gives a fuck? Bangers, but it's not the same. It's not. It's not really me putting myself into project, which that brain dynamic definitely is, and I'm I'm happy with that. That and my new project. That's the best. That's that's what I will die and leave behind, and that will never die. Trust me. Mm-hmm. Like when you hear my new music, you will fucking actually spin out. It's heaps better. Because I've had time to make it how I wanted it. Yeah, and you've got artists who pride themselves off of, you know, smashing out a project really quickly. And and for mm. some people, that works really well. Like Indigo Merkaba being a great example of that. Like, that, as you said, uh-huh. 48 hours and bang, you can drop nine tracks Definitely. that are fucking cold rate, you know what yeah. i mean the work rate is insane whereas yeah. other people like I'm, I'm very similar to you in terms of the stuff that i spend time on it feels like it's so much better it feels like it's so much more polished and you know i think there's definitely yeah. pros to capturing something in a short space of time but when you do spend more time on it personally yeah i prefer it as well it depends on who you are and what kind of artist you are and what recording process you go through and this that and the other but like if you're in a cre- on a creative one, could you s- like how fast can you smash out tracks if you are really on one? This new project, I haven't written for twelve months plus. Like I've been in and out of jail these last two years, and I just, just sucked creativity out of me. I had nothing, but I thought that I lost it. I thought like I'm never gonna rap again. This is fucking stressing me out, and I'm over trying. And like I come home, I lived a bit of life. I, Obviously, was inspired by a few things. Listening to music again. I wrote all these motherfuckers in me, and then the next two months, I've turned like nine tracks into five. Because, like, I'm not fucking trying to make an album. That's another thing that, like, cunts expect from people that I don't want to ever do. I don't have in my life, as a person, I don't have attention span to even listen to an album anymore. Like, I, I enjoy them, but my way. It's like trying to read a book. Like, I've got to put time aside to listen to an album and, like, try still to keep working on this old... That's just not how I do it. When I'm over it, I'm over it. And I did this new thing in fucking a day. I wrote it, and I was like, that's enough. I'm not writing anymore. And I've got this dope project right now that I just want to fucking drop. I'm just, like, trying to see what the fuck they want to do. Otherwise, I would have just dropped it. I hear it, man. And I think people are going to... I think with you, you wouldn't ever have to do promo. You could just drop music out of nowhere and you're always going to have cunts, always, like, you know what I mean, running to listen to it. That's, you know what I mean? I think you're in that position now where, you know, you've got such a strong, like, core supporter base. You know what I mean? Like, people may have a bigger number, but in terms of the love that you get from an individual person... I, I put you up in this this weird cult like following category of like you maybe cursor. Uh, it kills I mean, my life, bro. Like I know that I've done hell of shit wrong. Like there's heaps of things that I'm like that's not good. I can't have it on that. It's the best. I'm like it's really not, bro. Not. <laughs> yeah. Well, am I right in saying as well you had to address it at one point where I'm, I I could be so wrong and correct me if I am, but I'm sure you put up something on social one time of like like listen, this is the life that i've lived through this isn't a normal mm. kind of thing to go through for most people so yeah. i'm not trying to glorify it. i'm here you know speaking about it and if you relate in any way shape or form and if it helps you then that's amazing that's fantastic but don't go and try to do the same shit i did just because you've seen husky do it kind of thing or you've heard that i've gone through certain yeah shit. that was massive Heaps of these kids were like because th- like, I, I was really fucking my life up for ages and like People were like, Husky's cool, but like, they're taking drugs trying to be cool. They're sending me videos just doing reckless things that I wouldn't even do. And then I'm like, why do you think I approve this shit? Like, what the fuck, man? You're like 13. Don't send me that shit. Get your shit together. Don't be like me. And then I started to get real guilty. And I was like, what the fuck? Am I influencing these motherfuckers to be a certain way? I was trying to find myself kind of thing. I didn't really know who the fuck I was. I, I was trying to, as well, be successful in career-wise. And like being myself, I've never seen that being a, a way of being successful. But like I thought, like if I was doing my shit, like that brain numb, that was like a thing that I needed to make. That's some things I needed to say. All the other songs, really, that were just like a couple in, in here and there that you know that are deep. But most of them, they're just trying to like, what do people want to hear? Where's music going at the moment? What's this Aussie scene doing? Like I don't fucking care about that shit. I was just like. 
I wasn't pretending to care. I was just like trying to do what I felt was right. And I'm, I regret it, kind of. But do you regret it now? And then maybe down the line, do you think you could get to the point where you appreciated that you did that to help you realize? Like, you wouldn't have known that if you never made it. Let's say it, the Brain Numb EP was the only thing you ever made then surely at that point you'd be wanting to make all that other music or do you know that like nah i only made that other music because i was in a position where i had to kind of thing uh, not really it just was influenced by the wrong idea right like it was definitely me expressing myself but it was influenced from ways that wouldn't be now that i've been in the game long enough to go like that shit never really was me and it never helped me anyway like it, they're the things that i read I think it's just a thing about growing up, you know. I mean, everyone makes mistakes. It's just mine will happen to be on fucking tape and shit. Like, but I definitely wouldn't want to not make that music. Mm. I just wish that I knew what I knew. I knew now, and I could just be like, "Fuck, bro!" Right? Then the masses, and like, I don't even want that attention. Like, I'm out here trying to say things on purpose, turn people off on music. Because then I'm like, I know the cunts that will be turning me saying that. At least on my new tape, heroin rap, just because I know there's a certain amount of people that are like, "What the fuck? That's fucked up." This kind of on heroin? I'm just saying it because it's like, dude, like, seeing someone on heroin kind of music, you know what I mean? It's not really it's fucking seeing people on heroin music. It's not fucking, oh, I'm using heroin to make the music. Yeah. But I didn't care what people thought because I was like, if they think that, I don't shit. Because my team was like, don't do that. I wanted to have that, in some ways, that creative freedom to just be able to do what the fuck you want, but then them saying like, yeah, it might not be the smartest move at the same time. Does that often happen where you're like, yeah, this is a great idea and someone has to turn around and say, oh, ski. Nah, it, it might not be the greatest idea in the world to do that. Yeah, that has happened. And, like, trust me, like, that's a thing. Like, I have said them things to chill in it. Like, he's had a few lines here and there, and I've been like, bro, that is cringe. You need to take that out of the song, bro. It's all corny. Hmm. And he's like, nah, I can't. Fuck you. And then people have gone on to, like, quote that bar heaps, and I'm like, graphic for shit that I just don't understand. So you never really know what you're doing is right until you get the feedback, like. At the moment, I'm just doing what feels right. No, 100%. And that's how it should be, though. You know what I mean? It should be it, it should be that if 50 other people say, that's a bad idea, if you know within yourself, if you really trust yourself, then, you know what I mean? That Ultimately, yeah. that should be the thing that you should do. Now, equally, don't get me wrong, I could very easily flip that perspective and say exactly the same thing. If 50 people are telling you don't do exactly. something, they might be on to something, you know? So it, it depends exactly. how you see that. That's the thing with this heroin rap thing. Like, I'll just explain to you the whole reasoning. I still stand to that. I still think that's a sick idea and, like, it's dope. But I do know that it's not the best idea. Yeah. It's not the smartest idea. And it's not going to damage me to not do it. It's not really, like, the biggest expression of myself. It's just the thing that I'm like, fuck these kind. I, I, I kind of see, like, there's, 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 like, there's room to move on, like, most of these divisions. Yeah. If there's 50 cunts telling you something, sometimes it's just like, fuck off, but, yeah, see yeah. how it goes. And, I mean, it's difficult when you ride that fine line between, the fine line between doing what you want to do, but then also playing the game for what it is as well. Like, you know what I mean? You're obviously not going to sell out or anything, but, you know, there's certain things that you should probably do because it's going to benefit you. You know, that fine line between, you know, I still want to do this, but I know I've kind of got to tick certain boxes as well at the same time. Like, Yeah, I did do them things in the start that I'm saying I'm not happy with. I probably wouldn't be as successful. Maybe I would be like creative and maybe the, like the body of work I leave behind would be more catered to me and I'd be more proud of it. But... I, I feel that doing them things, because I do understand music. It's not like I was making big mistakes. It's just stuff that a really natural idea that I would run with. I'm trying to twist my idea to work to a beat that fit at the time. Or like, you know what I mean? I've jumped on drill tracks, this and that. Like, I'm not allowed to stab but mm -hmm. it is what it is. It's not where I'm going to go from now on. From now on, I'm really just going to make music for 10 cunts. And if they don't like it, that's all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. I'm not gonna think about all these motherfuckers. No, that was mad, bro. Thank you. I fucking this is a mad idea, good idea. And look out for this new tape of mine. I'm gonna call it Antihero for obvious reasons. Like uh, you'll hear it. I can't wait to just show people. You know what I mean? Like fuck, I haven't released music for a long time. The last release I dropped on some phone recording. Fucking trying to remake every beat over some dope acapella, acapella shit. Ah, uh, bro, I'm not happy. I've got shit coming out probably in the next two months. Let's do the count. Yeah, I love that, bro. Appreciate that, man. You don't speak until that's right. I respect my opinion. Yeah, they wait until unless you don't speak until.